Welcome once again, everybody, to Blockbuster Mentality. I'm your host, Ben. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere you listen. Make sure you rate, review us, leave us a review. It takes you 30 seconds. We'd really appreciate it. Make sure you go to our website, blockbustermentality.com. That helps support the show as well. And follow us on Twitter at BlockbusterCast and Instagram at Blockbuster Mentality. That's where you'll get all the updates on the show. Today we'll be discussing 1934's It Happened One Night with Clark Gable. Well, it stars Clark Gable. We won't be discussing it with him. Uh, We'll be discussing it with the great Kate Flannery, perhaps best known as playing Meredith Palmer on The Office. She's doing a cabaret show right now with Jane Lynch uh, that you can get uh, information about on Jane Lynch's website. Uh, So be be sure to check that out. She's going to mention the website in the show. And uh, yes, this is her favorite movie. She wanted to discuss it. It's the first movie ever to win the Big Five Oscars. The Big Five Oscars being Best Picture, Best Director, Best Writing, Best Lead Actor, and Best Lead Actress. Uh, And it's only been done three times. Three times. And the other two, of course, were, I don't know, you'll find out when you listen to the show. Uh, But yeah, we had a blast talking with Kate, and uh, here's our conversation. Now, I, you're uh, the publicist said you were a little busy today. I know. We're, we're, yeah, we're yeah. I'm just um, yeah. We had a bunch of. We actually sang on Kelly Clarkson, uh, Jane Lynch, and I, which was really fun. Yeah. What'd you sing? A song from our our show uh, from our um, our cabaret act. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, well, tell us a little bit about your cabaret act, Kate. Uh, sure. Well, we started. Um, we started this about seven years ago in New York, and then we've been touring the country. And we did a Christmas album that did really well, so we do Christmas tours as well um, because the album was in the Billboard Top Ten for a few weeks. So it's it's done great. So yeah, it's a joy. I mean, we have a great time, and I've known Jane forever. And um, yeah, we have. It's like a concert. It's kind of like the Rat Pack, but with a couple of broads. <laughs> Check out a jazz band. They're really fun. It's not too serious, but there are there is some beautiful music, but it's there's a lot of fun and it's not a hostage situation. So it's good. Well, I, I did see a uh, I'm not sure what show it was from. I don't think it was from the Christmas show, but it might have been. It was uh, a rendition of Nicki Minaj's Anaconda. Uh, yeah. That was <laughs> something true. else. Not a Christmas song, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> not yet. yeah. Yeah, not uh, yeah. I wouldn't. I don't think "Tis the Season" when I think of that song. <laughs> That's no. <laughs> not so much. Now, d- so, do you guys do like uh, all like renditions of songs like do, that? Uh, it's mostly like um, standards and and show tunes and and yeah. It's it's yeah. It's not so. Uh, that's that's an exception to what Nicki Minaj is an exception, not a rule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I see you. Uh, you did you go to Second City? Is that correct? Did the internet or did the internet fail me? That is cr- true. I, I I studied there and I worked for them. I tour. I was in the touring company. Okay, is that uh, where you met Jane, or was she a part of that? I don't Actually, know. yeah, she was. The first time I ever went to Second City, Jane was understudying uh, for somebody, and then I became her understudy like a year and a half later. Life was so crazy. So, <laughs> it really is. And then you guys have been, uh, I assume, going on and off with the cabaret thing. And then I assume uh, COVID kind of kind of put a damper right. on things for a yeah. while. Yep. Yep. <laughs> we're, we were just in Alaska and Seattle. Um, uh, thinking, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was less. A week and a, two weeks ago. Yeah, it was great. Nice. I don't know where I am. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm so no. like, you know, just got back and I'm like. I did an indie movie in Alaska right after that, so I was gone for a while. So I'm, I have no concept of time. It's Can you talk about right. that movie at all? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, a little bit. Uh, we just finished it. It's it's called um, Bolt from the Blue, and it's kind of a kind of a kind of a weather movie. And Alaska is definitely one of the stars because it's so beautiful up there. Um, but yeah, it was fun. We shot in a log cabin for four days, and it was really fun and really intense and cold it was fantastic excellent yeah, yeah. that's i uh yeah I've, i'm furthest I, we're in we're here in florida i'm from detroit originally furthest west i've ever been is 
Colorado, I want to say. So yeah. I'm I'm still yet to get to get that to that uh, time. No, no, I went to Vegas. Sorry, Vegas one time. So there you go. Been been in the Pacific time zone, but that's it. <laughs> um, now, I mean, obviously, I mean, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about this. I can't believe it's been almost eight years now since uh, the end uh, of the office. I know. Um, is yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's <laughs> even crazier for you, a place you, you yeah. were a part of for nine seasons, and just, uh, I mean, how how much has your life stayed the same, and how much has your life changed since the end of the office? Ah. Uh- <laughs> Well, you know, the funny thing about the office is that it's bigger now than it was when we were on the air. So it really <laughs> continues to define my life uh, in a great way. Thank God I had a great experience because I'm asked to speak about it a lot. I mean, if it was bad, I'd be in hell right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was really great. I mean, I I met my boyfriend on the show. We, we met season one, but we didn't start dating until the end of season two. So we were kind of the real Jim and Pam from the show. <laughs> oh, okay. Almost 16 years. So yeah, it's been Were one of you engaged? I'm sorry? Were one of you engaged and you had to like No, you, no, 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 yeah, you know, I'm like multiple. I don't want to. We don't want to make this about the office. I know you've talked about this a million times, but it, it is true that uh, I, because I've seen the show. I know Ben's in the same way. I, I've watched. I don't know. I watched that show as much as I've watched any show. Um, you know, literally hundreds of times. And then, uh, you know, on like the fiftieth rewatch, you're like, wow, Jim's being a little, a uh, little underhanded. <laughs> what he's doing there? <laughs> it's like- so he's not just like he's not the, uh, the 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 sweet nice guy that we always think that he, <laughs> he yeah some of those pranks are like whoa yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> almost tedious uh, when you keep watching them yeah they kind of take on a different life <laughs> it, definitely yeah him you know kind of swooping in under under Roy there and you know it's uh it's like Jim maybe uh maybe back off a little dude. Right, uh, right. <laughs> But I, I had two things for Meredith. One, Casual Friday. Were were you commando, or what? What was going on there? Uh, you know what? It's NBC, so it's none of your business. Oh, HBO to find out, right? <laughs> I like to see this the uncensored office. <laughs> uh, uh, the other one I was thinking when 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 Michael hit you with the car. That yes. I, I would be curious what. What a, I mean, did you really smack into that windshield? Because it seemed I like did. you. I rolled out the glass. I, I I rolled into the glass and then off the car into a giant mat below that was what? only placed on one side. And one time I almost fell off the wrong side. But <laughs> what, 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 yeah. was there any sort of conversation of uh, we're probably going to just use a stunt woman for it? Or was it... no? It was like, hey, are you willing to try this? I'm like, yeah. sure. <laughs> why not it's actually the idea of the editor david rogers it was his idea so it was like he was showing the the director like hey i think this could work so it was kind of a test and it went so well that they were like oh my god this is it <laughs> i'll smash my face into that windshield damn right <laughs> that's right oh uh, man it just yeah it's so great yeah your face and you just <laughs> roll right off <laughs> it's funny when it's a real person you know when you can tell it's a real person yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh man, great stuff. Um, now, <laughs> now I'm just gonna be thinking of you rolling off a car the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we, uh, again, we like to have uh, celebrities on and uh, break down a film with them. And uh, the film of your choice was the 19. 19- I think this might be our oldest film yet. Mm-hmm. That we have broken down, which is great. It happened one night from 1934. Uh, Frank Capra film, uh, Clark Gable, Claudette Colbert, um, or Colbert. I don't, one of the Colbert. two. Colbert. Colbert. Okay, I was right. Oh. I was right. Okay, Even good. Colbert stole the pronunciation. Seriously, because he was Colbert. He did. Oh, wow. Was like, he changed the pronunciation. Yep. Look at oh, that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was like, uh, am I just thinking that cause of Steven, but no, I'm thinking that cause of her. Cause of her. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> so why, why, why this movie, Kate? Why, why did you this pick this movie? movie? Holds up. So the comedy in this movie is so real and the love story is real. So it's the perfect 
combo of love and funny, which of course I think the office is the perfect combo of love and funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and Clark Gable has never been funnier. I mean, the direction is so good. There are jump cuts that are just make you laugh out loud. And I feel like Peter Bogdanovich stole a little bit. Of, he, he, he had an homage to it in um, paper moon a little bit. There's a few things in the car where all of a sudden there's a jump in the car and you're, and you it's, yeah, it's just like impeccable and perfect. There's one point where um, there's a famous hitchhiking scene in the movie yeah. where he's going to teach her how to hitchhike. <laughs> it's a road movie and but they're on the run she's on the run um because her father wants to get her marriage annulled from this douchebag named uh <laughs> king was king, it oh king wesley king wesley and um clark gable is a reporter so he's going to help her just so he can get the story because his boss basically fired him and they're both on this stupid bus from florida to new york um, back in the 30s where there were no bathrooms or any amenities. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> My God. Yeah. And, yeah. So it's a road picture, but it's a love. Story. You know, they, of course, they have, they bug the shit out of each other and then they fall in love. Uh, and then they, you know, we're all sort of and there's so many misunderstandings. And and um, there's a few characters on the bus that are just such, so, so many great characters. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's this one guy, the shapely, shapely, believe you me, he's trying to pick her up. And that's when um, she, he tries to pick up Claude Colbert on the bus. And and um, Clark Gable says, would you excuse me? I'd like to sit next to my wife. Like He basically protects her by claiming right. he's her husband. And then they have to share a room together, which um, to save money, because she doesn't have any, she got her her money stolen when she was there. And she, she can't get it wired until she gets back to New York. It's very complicated. She doesn't want to get caught by her dad. Yeah. So they're in this auto, what they called an auto camp. It's a motel. They used to call it an auto camp back in the day. And he puts a rope up with a blanket to keep it separate because um, he wants to make clear that he is not interested in her. At all. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's make one thing clear, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I th- oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Some, uh, it's one of those movies where you're like, there's so many things about it. There's so many ways that the story is told that are just like, funny and quirky and odd but there's a reality to it it some of it feels improvised because it's so fresh the dialogue yeah. and that just the 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 chemistry between them is so good and yeah, so yeah it r- really is and I, I that moment you brought up about him uh you know on the bus and he yeah acts like her husband it's um I love that because he sits down. He's like, oh, I didn't do it, you know, to protect you. I just didn't want to hear him talk no more. Yeah, he goes, like, <laughs> he gets on my nerves. His voice gets on my nerves. That's yeah. Really yeah. It was an annoying voice. Yes. That guy, oh, my gosh. That Roscoe Carnes, he's a genius. He's in a million movies. He's, I think he's in the front page, too. He's been in a million movies. Funny, funny guy. Great character actor. Good take on it. Or just an original character. Apparently, I sorry, Dave. I have to say okay. this because apparently this movie inspired Bugs Bunny. I learned when preparing for the show. <laughs> uh, that guy, first of all, he kept yes. saying he kept saying Doc. Doc he kept calling, right? Yeah. I totally. I, oh you, wow! Absolutely. Yes. I, like, I didn't know that, but I knew that. I knew Warner Brothers was like referential, and of course, that's ex- yeah, because he's yeah, he's a wisecracker. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess, I think Bugs Bunny came out like 1940 or something, and then right. yeah, it's right. And, and of course, it's a wonder. It, it happened. Well, it happened one night. Was uh, it was the um, it, it was the best picture that year, so it was super famous for ever, all the good reasons. Yeah. You know, everybody knew it. it was such a classic. Immediately. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. You were saying something, Dave. Sorry, I cut you off. Well, I was just thrilled, Kate, when when Ben told me you picked this movie because I this is my first viewing, and for us to go back and watch a movie sort of this old that has that won what was it Ben like five Oscars or something? It had yep. the sweep or whatever, right? Yep. Yeah, the big uh, five. Yep. And and a, a Frank Capra film because I love It's a Wonderful Life, so I'd love to see you know more of him. So I was just I was just excited just to watch this film because it probably you know would have been another however many years for me to come around to it. And yeah. I have to say, this movie is delightful. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's genuinely funny. Like you find yourself yeah. really laughing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that whole his, hitchhike scene, which is super famous, where he's going to teach her how to hitchhike. They're out of money and they they still have to move forward. So he's like, he's like, I'm gonna write a book about it. And he does all this technique. He's like, eh, and he's terrible at. It. I mean, every car passes. There's like, 
And it's- so she says, um, uh, all right, I'm going to stop a car and I'm not going to use my thumb. And she literally pulls up her skirt and sticks <laughs> up, like so high, which is like in 1934, it's like insane. And yeah. then all you see is the brakes of the car, like, <laughs> the car braking. And then the next shot is they're in the back seat, and they're f- and he's furious. He's just like Clark Gable, so pissed that they got a ride. It's such a perfect jump cut. <laughs> they use that kind of stuff, like I said, in, in Paper Moon. If you ever get a chance, similar era, but Paper Moon was made in the seventies. About uh, that's another nineteen thirties story on the road. Right. I, I feel like yeah. I've seen like a hundred versions of this movie like later you know i think so much totally. out of this film totally. has been, absolutely been, been, they uh, all ripped moral. this movie off this is the one this is the source yeah yeah, yeah. 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 it happened I mean, one night was, is the source for sure I mean, Lo- looney tunes even ripped it off so you know as we said <laughs> so i mean right no openly and and, right. and yes yeah. Yeah. yeah no no apology no exactly no. it's like come on <laughs> yeah, i think it's frank conroy plays her father and even he's great yeah uh, yeah you know, I mean, the whole movie starts with her on the boat. Um, she's being kind of kidnapped from her father because by her father because she, he he wants to get her an annulment because she married this pill King oh. Wesley. <laughs> and yeah, they, in the beginning, you think that this King Wesley, you know, like um, the the dad. I like the turn that the dad makes, or at least our perception of the dad's character is you 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 assume. He, I mean, we we tend to learn that he's a bit overbearing in general, always have been. But you don't think you think he's being controlling and going against something that would be good for her. And that's actually not the case. King Wesley is a pill. And the, the actor so that they get to play yes. him is so yes, weird. They looking. finally have a man, they have that wedding, and King Wesley comes in on the gyrocopter. <laughs> it's this weird, it's this weird version of a helicopter. Mm-hmm. And it's like the most stupid, grandiose way for a groom to come to a <laughs> trying to upstage the bride. Like, what a douchebag. <laughs> yeah, really all these rich people. And it's like the biggest <laughs> wedding, like 47 people marching down the aisles. You know, uh, literally there's like 27 bridesmaids and 20 groomsmen and and this choir and like, it, and the newsreels are there. They're all, they're all, the, they're filming it for the news because it's, it's so douchey. And then the father has that conversation with her as they're walking down the aisle, like, you could do, you, you could, you could do your old man a, a good turn by yeah. this guy and uh, going with that Peter, with the Clark Gable character. And you wouldn't right. do so bad for yourself either. You know, it's so <laughs> funny. And it, I just love how the movie makes you wait to figure out all this stuff. You know, we're not, we're not presented with some schlub of, as King Wesley. Yeah, he's rich or whatever. Right in the beginning, it's that we don't really get to know them yet. We, yes. we kind of have to go along the journey with, with our main characters first to figure out the whole story. I love that. Yeah, it's so it's so great. And and just um, I, I, Clark Gable is so funny. And Ellen Hale has this wonderful cameo in it as the guy that he's the guy that picks them up when they're hitchhiking. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Ellen Hale, I don't know if you if you guys know that TV show Gilligan's Island, but this guy is the father of the skipper because that's oh, Ellen okay. yeah. as a skipper. But they don't look alike or sound alike. They're kind of really different actors. But Al- Alan Hale Senior is. He has, even though he plays big characters, he's very subtle and weird and 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 real. So he's, they're in the back seat, and he thinks that they're married too. They say that you know they're they're on their honeymoon, so that's why they're hitchhiking, right? And then he wants to see if, stop and see if they want to get some food, and they say, "Oh no, no, they don't have any money." They're like, "We're we're we're not hungry." So he just starts singing, "Young people in love, on <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I you see like Clark Gable almost like breaking there, like oh, I, I, so, it's, you can tell it feels like this improvised <laughs> moment on yeah. Alan Hill's part, and it's just like this guy is this, and then he's like, uh, y- uh, "You better stop there, Mister. You might uh, you might hurt a tonsil." <laughs> and Alan Alan Hill's like, "My tonsils, my tonsils won't burn." Like, he, <laughs> like it's like this super funny, silly, and then there's like a callback later when Clark Gable's driving. I, it's so good. I know. I'm giving. I, we're jumping. No, all over. It, oh, we're good. Movie. Yeah, this such is, a great movie. Feel this free. And he ends up did. stealing their luggage. Fine, yeah. thief. He's a scumbag. Oh. <laughs> How did, how, how did he know how did he know that was gonna happen? I mean, come on. He I guess he's an opportunist, you know. He's like, Oh, they're all out of my car, I'm gonna leave. But I, I love how this is like a road trip movie too. It's like it seems yes. like it would be like one of the you know, 
first, you know, and I, I mean, there's probably other ones, but the most you know, me- remember the first memorable one for sure. Yeah, definitely. Or- like, yeah. yeah, I love the moment of them all singing in the bus and, you know, yes. the trapeze song. That's so totally. great. Yeah, there's this moment that you're like, oh my gosh. And that it feels so old fashioned, but in a sense, it's sort of like, well, the transistor radio was not invented yet. The bus probably didn't have a radio. Um, Cause they just, it was a little too soon, like a literally a little too soon. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, no. You think of planes, trains and automobiles with John Candy singing the okay. uh, Flintstones and all that. Yeah. It's kind <laughs> of fun. That's sort of like, what do you do? You know, what's the old fashioned thing to do on a trip or, you know, um, people yeah, just start singing. They yeah. do, they sing in a bus in the office. You guys do. You, it's you, true, right? On, on the way to the beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's it's got yeah, road trip comedy. It's got you know romance. It's got you know, uh, yes. kind of entitleless. You know, uh, you you have her who's kind of like this entitled brat, and her yes. character yeah, really there's, develops. There's a, there's and, a morality about you know the hardworking man versus the rich bitch. You know, and, yeah, and, <laughs> um, yeah, and and I mean, he criticizes her upbringing constantly. He criticizes her constantly. You know, he 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 actually calls her out. He's like, you wouldn't know humility. You know humility like he, he literally lays it out there it's like she doesn't even know what he's talking about at first and yeah uh, you know it's 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 so interesting and and then he literally sends the father a bill for um what he lost and she thinks he wants a reward and yep. uh, it's just for like you know a couple of shirts and a hat and the- yeah it was like thir- <laughs> 39 60 or something right, and right, that's right. like that's is that what, cheap oh, that's enough just... for you is that cheap enough for you oh my gosh <laughs> i love that yeah. and then it gives uh clark gable and, and a reason to go to the to the day of the wedding to actually see her marry somebody else he's like i want to see what love's like when it try when it triumphs so <laughs> so sarcastic <laughs> right yeah yeah and it wasn't your typical like stop at the altar like no she's mine you know it was he happened to be in that area but it wasn't right. and then the you father's know. the one that really finds out that that clark gable loves her that peter warren loves um you know yeah. this woman. and 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 he doesn't want to say it. He's just so annoyed. Still, I'm so annoyed by her. It's so funny. I know. Right. I was getting frustrated at the end. Like, just admit it, man. You're like, you're going to lose her. And I'm like, I'm like totally invested in this movie, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, right. But I, the way it's just so perfectly paced and revealed. And t- I mean, the storytelling is so great. And then he sees her all dressed up. He's like, now nah, you look natural. He's so sarcastic. You know, right. in her wedding dress, look at the glass of wine, like, hey, you know. <laughs> well, and I I, lo- I love how it's the audience knows, but the two characters have this whole idea of what actually transpired. Like she thinks he just left in the middle of the night, just wants yes. the money, and then he thinks she, you know, she doesn't love him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. she she just left with you know yes. to, to go right. for King Wesley. That's right. And- but she, but that's right. He thinks she left, and she thinks he left. Yeah, so right. Exactly. Yet, right. It's like yeah. He's dead. I think yeah, yeah. There's right. a lot of there's a lot of tension towards the like in the last like 15 20 minutes of this film. And just a uh, plot point for anyone who didn't see. So she um what's her name? Uh, <laughs> I can out. It's um it's uh Ellen. Ellen Ellen yes. Andrews is it? Ellie, yeah, Ellie Ellen Andrews, Andrews, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she, uh, as Kate said, she, her dad tells her not to, to annul her marriage. She jumps, jumps off the boat, hilariously escapes, rides a bus. He has a $10,000 reward. He has all kinds of detectives uh, uh, trying to bring her back and all that. She runs into Clark Gable, who's a newspaper reporter. He decides, hey, I got a hell of a story here. And it doesn't seem, I don't know if he was playing it cool or not, but I don't think he, he was really, it took a long time for him to get attracted to her, right? Right. I mean, I think he was, there was chemistry, but it, I don't know if he interpreted it as love, which happens sometimes, you know. He seemed yeah. genuinely annoyed by her. Yeah. And he, they have to sleep. Hurt him. Yeah. They have to sleep all night on the bus next <laughs> to each other. And she's, you know, he literally, she gets up at one point, and he puts his hand on the seat to make it uncomfortable for her to sit back down in that spot. I thought it was the cop of feel. Well, maybe, but he acts like he was just sleeping <laughs> with his hand, which is like so funny. It's just so, it's so absurd. Definitely. And he wakes up and she's like literally like wrapped around him. She's so like asleep and unconscious. Like she's all, and, and, and he's like, uh, yeah, just like open and waking up like, what, yeah. what are you doing? You know, a little bit of Jim and Pam in there waking up. I'm on telling the you, I'm telling you. 
<laughs> it is. It t- totally is. It's I mean, it, this movie, my it's God, a, it's tale as old as time. Tale as old as time. And of course, you know all the stories that, that that you know with with Clark Gable dealing with his boss at the newspaper, him saying, "I really have a story, and it's about me, and we're in love, and and all of that falling apart." I mean, it's just it just breaks your heart, and everybody there that works with him like is rooting for him, and then realizing like, "Oh no, we we can't." There's been a misunderstanding. We don't know what's true. I mean, it's just whoa. It just when, what, when, do it the, when do you think the when do you think the moment was when they fell in love with each other? Where like when when they realized they were in love with each other? Was it uh, for her? To me, it was when he was describing like the Pacific Ocean, like being in the Pacific and the, explaining the stars. Like that's where I would want to bring a lover or whatever. And, right. Uh, and I think that's where she realizes. It, like that sounds great. And yes, I want to do that with you. To me, that's where she does. And- I think that's where, yeah, I think that's where we, yeah, we definitely know where she, where, how she feels. But I almost feel like when they're singing in, uh, when everyone's singing in the bus and she falls and he goes to pick her up and she says, that, don't pick me up. That's the most comfortable spot I've been in the whole time. Yeah. She's so relaxed with him and laughing and just in this moment. And she's forgetting all this other turmoil and drama that she's in and she's just like literally just having this present moment with this guy in the middle of nowhere on this journey like right the bus is like, i don't even know if it's like i don't know if it's if they're in in um georgia i don't even know or south yeah. Carolina, i'm not even sure but there's somewhere between florida and and um baltimore at that right point. yeah i don't know that's why i sort of see her like really soften and definitely you know, like, yeah. yeah and then that's when um Right after that is when uh, Oscar, right? That's his name. Um, the Bugs Bunny guy. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he, you know, finds out that uh, oh, Shapely. who she Shapely. is. Shapely, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he finds that out. And then uh, <laughs> Clark Gable has to kind of play this game of, oh, yeah, we're yeah, we're going after him. But not for the not for the ten thousand dollars. We're we're going after the family. Yeah, we're, like we're asking for to scare this yeah. guy. Yeah, How about that not- turn of. That acting where he flips that switch and becomes this really scary guy. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was pretty amazing. And the guy <laughs> ends up like running through like the Everglades in Florida. Like, <laughs> by a, I mean, who knows? He just left in the middle. And he thought he was going to get shot. It was so scary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's just so great. I was I texted <sighs> Dave earlier. I was like that. Like they don't make or the male male lead actors aren't what they used to be to me. Like, it's, it's so just true. like. They were so cool, so much more cool. Like they were just cooler. Right. Like that's really cool. And you know, there's that scene when um, there's people knocking on the motel door, and he's making breakfast, and they have a fake fight because yeah. they're pretending to be somebody else. And she she brushes her hair down her face so no one recognizes her. Yeah. And he's like, "Once a plumber's daughter, always a plumber." Daughter. You know that that whole exchange. Yeah. She just suddenly is like, um, "Are you addressing me?" Like suddenly. She's <laughs> But they just kind of get in this fake fight and they fool these people into like realizing like, oh, this isn't the right couple. This isn't the right woman. This can't yeah. be. <laughs> that moment where, and he's like, hey, you were pretty good. You were pretty good. That thing where they realize like they have this this uh, ability to play that they, uh, obviously she's never played with anybody like that. He might have, but, you know, she she definitely has never been in that situation before. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic. Right. Kate, where where did we go wrong? Why why don't we have more more Clark Gable types or more of these type of portrayals? And even the relationships between men and women, it just seems to work. Um, I don't know that something feels more real, even though it's like eighty years right. old. What is, is that crazy? Yeah, it does feel real. I know. Um, I don't know. You know, I I think it's direction too. I mean, I think Frank Capper is a great storyteller. He got a little. Um, a little preachy in some of his movies. I'm a huge fan. Don't get me wrong, but I always felt like there was this message of, um, particularly like in in um, um, Mr. D go, Mr. D goes to town, or um, is that Mr. D goes to town? Whatever. Um, Mr. Yeah. Smith goes to no. No, that that's a different one. That's yeah. also pre- that's also preachy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. D's is the one with um, Gary Cooper, who he's a a, a simple guy from a small town who writes greeting cards and he, he has like an inheritance and suddenly he's living on fifth Avenue. And yeah, yeah. I only know the Adam Sandler and, version. So yeah. There's a few, and uh, Yeah. Or even um, meet John Doe, which is also with Gary Cooper, where he's like a, a you know, th- some of them, like there's a message where you feel yeah. like there's, there's an agenda where I feel like 
it happened when I does not have that agenda. It's just a, a funny, funny love story. Yeah. And for it to be from 1934 and to be watchable still today is because, I mean, you got, you know, movies that are revered in like the 30s and 40s. But if you go back and watch them, it's just like, eh, I get why it's good, but it's kind of boring. Kind of like with, for me, Citizen Kane, it's just like, OK, I understand why it's good, but it's, eh, right, you know, right. There's <laughs> things that pick you out and right. it takes you out of this movie of, of it happened when I, in my opinion, nothing. I mean, even I mean, <sighs> There's something about black and white too. If you ever get to see it on a bigger TV or actually in a theater, mm-hmm. there's something about the art direction that can be almost mesmerizing when it's really big. It's weird. It's yeah. like, don't experience it on a small screen, but in a big screen, I don't know. Just like the, and the pacing of this movie is just so good. You're never looking at your watch. You're never feeling like I gotta go to the bathroom because it's yeah. just so <laughs> good. You right. know, it's yeah. just there's not that <laughs> thing that makes you feel like. Okay, I just have a little, you know, it feels like an assignment. Like I said, I was going to watch this and I'll watch it. You know. Yeah, no, because we've, we've had those. Don't get me wrong. We've, we've had yeah. a number of these doing the show. And we say so either ones that we've picked or ones that have guests, guests have picked. And um, it, they, they sometimes can be slogs. And I did not feel that way at all. Of course, this one does come under two hours. And, yeah. you know, Ben, we talk about. Uh, what's something that feels modern and I even wonder like what we even mean that by that it feels like when we mean it we just feel like it's just relatable it's human it doesn't matter like what it looks like on the screen or how old it is it's just how true the story is and this this one just has that at 100 it could be from really this could be a movie from I don't know any time really it doesn't even have to necessarily be old it just has this timeless quality all on its own so fantastic even though this movie is very much of its time it's sort of depression era um, it doesn't even really try to to hide away from being a movie of its time, but it, yet it still, it still cuts through because it just has that perfect, <laughs> like you said, Kate, there's, it's not a lot of big messaging. It's just telling a very human story and this movie will last forever. I hope Definitely. so. I really do. You know, it's, I, I waited tables at a place in Beverly Hills and I used to wait on Frank Capra jr. Sometimes. Oh. And I, the reason why I knew it was really? him was of his credit card and he doesn't look like his dad, but I was like, Oh, uh, 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 I there, I their father. You know, I mean, like, you know, um, do you, do you remember, the, what's up? I was just going to say, do you remember your first time watching this? Uh, oh my God. You know what? I'm sure I saw it when I was little and it went yeah. over. My, we were big old movie watchers in my house. Like my dad was always like, do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Yeah. You know, my dad also loves the character actors. And I think he also just generally likes funny movies. And this is one of them. Yeah. So that's why I, I knew who Roscoe Carnes was because he's really funny. And he, yeah. even his book's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Um, and then um, uh, I, I, what, one more thing I'll say is just I, I love how it is an hour and 45 minutes and the romance, the them falling in love feels earned. Like it doesn't feel yes. just rushed and, you know, like, oh, they're in love now. What? It's, it's It doesn't feel like what? Like, why would they be in love? Like it feels earned, feels real. Um, and I think it's just because that journey and their chemistry is just so spot on, you know, it's just. Yeah, and I think that he, Frank Hammer manages to create this um, tension when I just remember there's a scene where they're in the hay field and it's at night and like they're kind of what's when she's making decisions. You can see she wants to be with him and then she gets really scared that he's not there. Yeah, I love that. There's something like where I feel like in some movies you might feel like, okay, here we go. This is the part where like we're supposed to, but you don't go, my head doesn't go there. Um, right. It's like, you know, sometimes you can set your watch to a certain <laughs> time where you're like, they drag something out or try to create something extra to make you feel more invested or they add extra dramatic music. So you're supposed to suddenly get on the ride for the yeah. last, last part of it. And I feel like that never quite, that's never the case in this movie. Yeah. Like watching a, you know, not to knock it, but watching a, a Hallmark movie or something where you just, all the cues are just laid out okay. right in front of your face. Kind of just, I, I'm actually in a Hallmark movie. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I yeah, love I'm going to the Christmas pageant. And let me tell you, <laughs> guess what it's about? There's a woman who is done in New York and she has to go to a small town. Can you believe mm. it? Oh, go girl. You never believe what happens. 
She meets a guy, oh. a widower, with a, an adorable seven-year-old. Is oh. there a Labrador retriever there? There's no dog in this one. Okay. The one thing is my character was annoyed. Uh, so this is a director from New York. They asked her to come to the small town because they need a director for the for their Christmas pageant, which they do every year, which doesn't make any sense because isn't it sort of like just, right. yeah. it just do itself by that point? My character <laughs> is very skeptical of the New Yorker, but we find out that she's not skeptical for no reason. She's skeptical. She has possible vague cancer. Oh no. Hopefully it all works out. Oh. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you that, gotta have the little bit of a tragedy in there, but overcoming no. it. And, and I'm sure she learned something uh, truth, truthful about herself along the way. This is true. Just get out of New York and give up on show business in general. <laughs> now, for, now, for the next next forty five minutes, we're going to break down that movie. Um, so. oh, I think it'll take a lot shorter time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you you broke it down beautifully. I think it's. I know. I, I have to say. I mean, I'm being a wise ass. Yeah. I love I love Hallmark movies because I do like that they they embody that archetypal thing that, and that's why I think people love them so much. And I love. Yeah. The, are totally committed they watch them in july because they show them in july and they watch them pretty much from from halloween until uh new, new year's day but i feel like if you actually knew more older uh classic films you probably would not watch that because you would know what all the sources are from the stories yeah 100 percent. yeah there's certainly nothing wrong with watching something that's a little bit predictable and and wholesome or, or whatnot but right. yeah you no one's gonna you know no one's gonna confuse them <laughs> for this movie and that's okay they do their own thing but yeah i think people are missing out without watching uh, films like this 100 yep. yeah, yeah and as so. as you alluded to earlier dave this is one of three films to win the big five oscars best picture best director best writing best lead actor best lead actress uh the other two are one flew over the cuckoo's nest and um uh silence of the lambs so sure. one made history well it it made history in 1934 and held that until 1975 so That's amazing i know I, and you can see it like again the the two two leads are just again they're I, we've said chemistry a zillion times now but it's just <laughs> it's it's amazing yes. so great Absolutely. choice so glad you picked Thank this film any, any so final fun. thoughts on the film either of you that we um. <laughs> There's just one line she says, we'll get on a merry-go-round and we'll never get off. And I always thought that was right before she's going to marry the douchebag uh, King uh, King Wesley. And I was thinking, she's never going to get off. She's never going to get If she goes with Peter, she's never going to get it on and it's going to be great. But if she hangs out with King Wesley, she's never going to get off. Is it terrible? I don't know. Well, I, I no, that's, you know, it's... It's, it's, so it's, literal, it's true. Sorry. And it's a it's little true. merit than me to say that, but I'm just saying she's, <laughs> she goes with that guy. Don't go with that guy. Don't go with that guy. Well, He's we, not. You're dead. Kate, Kate, you you brought Meredith to life, so I think there's always <laughs> Meredith in in you. Right. So, um, oh, and then I, I also love um, that uh, we don't see Clark Gable again after she runs away from the wedding. We just hear that they're at this hotel, and uh, he sends a telegram saying like, or his yes. father-in-law says like, let the walls of Jericho fall or something. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's just, um, yeah, that's, yeah. I can't remember the exact. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like then, metaphor. you have to watch it because we're not even doing it justice, but yes, there, that is a moment, a great callback at the end and it's very silly, but it totally works. Totally Absolutely. Works. Was this movie a little scandalous in 1934? She, we oh. saw her in, in her nighty and, you know, a man sure, and a woman. Yeah, they, Ending yeah. guys that they're about to have sex, right? Mm. <laughs> Wall, walls of Jer it's walls the, of Jericho. It's their, it's their um, wedding night, so yeah, that yeah. when the and the and the uh, blanket come down, so therefore, yeah. there you go. Bada bing, bada wow. boom. You yeah. go both the piece. You guys didn't know that's how it works. The yeah, rope, I don't know. Come I down. still. I Wait, still can don't. you do the finger thing? Again? <laughs> well, <laughs> were you doing a hot dog in the? What were you doing? What? No. No, I thought you were doing. I thought you were doing that. Jesus. <laughs> you got her to do it. I got See? her to do it. <laughs> oh That's man, uh, we have uh, a few rapid fire questions for you, real quick. You ready? Yep. What's your go-to movie snack? Um, mm, I'm gonna say popcorn. Guilty pleasure movie. Uh, 
now Voyager. Uh, ooh, uh, I think I know the answer to this, but are, do you like musical movies or horror movies better? Musical movies. Uh, who do you like better, Jan or Roy? Jan. At a girl. Uh, Kubrick, Scorsese, or, or Spielberg? Oh, God. Um, apples, oranges, or peaches. All delicious. <laughs> all uh, seasonal and wonderful. Wait, what are my choices again? <laughs> Kubrick, Scorsese, and Spielberg. Two are still alive, so you maybe uh, maybe pick the dead one just so. Uh, <laughs> it's so hard. I um, know. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, we got one, Dave. We got one. Some? Sorry. You have a favorite um, of the three? Maybe you have a favorite movie. Well, one I, lo- I mean, Cooper, come on. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Lolita and I mean, oh my God, but Cooper has done so many, so many insanely wonderful movies. Um, I mean, cause there's 2001. I mean, there's, so many, oh my God. Um, but it sounds snooty to say Cooper because yeah. <laughs> You're gonna, uh, no you're gonna wrong have to rework answer. this one to maybe like. Yeah, sorry, we need a the... whole other show on on this. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, what's a, uh, do you have a movie besides this one anyway? A movie that inspires you? Um, God, so so many. Um, I actually love Anti Mame. It's one of my favorites. Cinematically, it's it's more like a stage um, production that's filmed beautifully with an extremely funny lead actress, uh, Rosalind Russell, and some amazing character actors, and it feels like a musical even though it's not. It became a musical later, but um, yeah, it's one of my favorite because um, it's just very female driven, but it's so funny and so quirky. And it, it it's again, another one of those way ahead of its time. I uh, played the butler in my high school uh, in that, in that production. Yeah. I love the music for that, for that. Yeah. A fame. That's fun. Yeah. It's, it's my it's, only it's, acting credit. <laughs> I, I just learned something today. I, I had no idea that you had acting in you. So. <laughs> I had three um, lines. <laughs> uh, well, uh, actor, actor, you want to work with? Um, all of them. <laughs> I know. I say it's so hard. Um, oh my god, that I have not worked with. Um, hmm. Jimmy Stewart. Ooh. Can we bring him back to life? Is that a choice? Oh, the, yeah, that's Bolton, a, that's. Yeah. An amazing Beautiful. choice. They, you just, yeah, Dave is excited now. Uh, and then uh, first movie that pops in your head when I say favorite movie of the 21st century. Um. Oh my God, is that what you <laughs> Jesus. He's like, I only watched the films from the 30s and 40s. <laughs> I, I'm kind of like, I mean, I am like, I. That's kind of how I am. Um. Oh I'm sorry. God. These are very <laughs> tough questions. I know. I'm putting <laughs> you on the spot. Like, you don't understand. I'm like, I feel like I'm out of time and space. What's the name of the Hallmark say, movie you're in? No, I was going to say Little Women, but that was from two years ago. Um, uh, well, it's 21st century, so I mean, we got 21 oh, years. Century. I thought you were just saying 2021. God damn oh, it. no, I, I don't even know Anything if I've seen past any. past the year 2000. <laughs> oh, my God, right? Um, almost Famous. Almost Famous. Ooh, great choice. Oh, my Love it. Favorites. Love never, it. Never gets no, I think that was 99 or 98, but... Oh, no, that was, no, no, that was 2000. Oh, was it? Okay. And that has another bus uh, sing-along scene yeah. with yes. Tiny Dancer. And it's a, so. road tri- a road trip movie for sure. Boom. She likes her road trip movies. It does. I do. Uh, so one uh, last time, Cabaret, you have dates and tours. What would you got? You go to janelynchofficial.com. Um, we are doing a, a, a tour of our anti-cabaret, Two Lost Souls, and then our Christmas tour. Uh, we have a whole Christmas concert. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Called two, It's called A Swing a Little Christmas. And you can just get the Christmas album yourself because it's on iTunes and Amazon. Fantastic. There you go. Yeah, and I got to well, say, this is what the show is all about, buddy. We get a, a, a talented actress like Kate, someone who's passionate and knowledgeable about movies to come on and, and school us a little bit and talk on it. So fantastic. Great. Having I'm glad you guys are doing this. I think it's so smart. And like you say, I feel like I feel like people just don't know, you know, and if they knew, then they would. But they don't. Yeah. So they, they can't. Yeah. Yeah. But now we are bringing that knowledge through Far. you. It's a beautiful thing. It's and it happened. <laughs> tonight. It happened one night. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. You brought it back. I love Walls it. Walls of Jericho <laughs> falling down. Right. A lot of trouble. Yeah. Okay. Oh my okay. gosh. We had an absolute blast. Thank and, you guys. Uh, th- thank All you the best. So much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Well, 
there you have it, folks. Kate Flannery on It Happened One Night. What an honor to be able to speak with her, talk The Office, talk classic movies. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for next week's show. Got a lot more guests coming up. And, uh, yeah, you shall listen. Um, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Blockbuster Cast and Instagram at Blockbuster Mentality uh, to get all the updates. Also, uh, you can just go to our website, BlockbusterMentality.com. Uh, can get all the information there as well. Uh, but that is, is it for me, folks. For Dave and Kate, I'm Ben. And as always, grab some popcorn, grab some snacks. We'll catch you guys at the movies. <laughs> <laughs>